This generation of consoles is crazy. I have no idea what's going on, except each company is really doing its own thing. And this past week, we've had a bunch of releases, actually leaks from PlayStation. So what is PlayStation showing and why are they doing it this way? Okay, within the past week, even over the weekend, we've had pretty much major leaks from the PlayStation side of gaming. First, we have Project Q looking like it's been leaked and someone has the physical copy of it. Looks like we have a PlayStation 5 Pro coming and something that hasn't really been talked about, but their adaptive controller called the Access Controller is coming out in December. So let's check them out. Now I'm going to just go with the things I know first and things I think are positive. The first one is that adaptive controller, the Access Controller. This is going to be like Xbox's adaptive controller in that it's just to support those with disabilities who want to continue to play. And this to me is a great thing and it's a big deal. And I do want to give a shout out to a video game company doing something right. I know many of you might say that Xbox has had their controller for many years. So yes, they're a little slow to the game, but they're in the game with it. And it means more players can play. I personally like this controller, the way it looks. It has, you know, hot swappable buttons. It has buttons that you can give for two different functions. You can add four different controllers to their four ports. You can even add dual sense controllers to it. You can add another access controller to it. And this gives you pretty much, you know, for the most part at this time, limitless options. I'm sure someone can do the math and tell me how many things you can do with this controller, but it looks pretty awesome. Now, I know there are detractors that will say, hey, People are using hardware cheats using these adaptive controllers. Well, screw them. This helps a lot of people and we should be looking to do that. And if you're thinking, well, I'm for lack of a better term, able bodied person and I just still want to use it. Well, that's cool because we want to see this succeed. We want to see people investing in this type of technology so more people can play video games. Quite frankly, fun fact about the Kinect, the Kinect has actually helped in the medical field, allowing people to communicate in ways they were unable to do it before. So this type of adaptation, how everyone functions with society, it's actually a really positive thing and I'm glad PlayStation is doing it. Let's move on to the second thing that we know is definitely coming out but just had a leak recently, and that is Project Q. It's up on Reddit, and as every other YouTuber has said, we're not showing it because we do not want the video to strike down. And quite frankly, I'm pretty sure PlayStation will probably be doing that. I know some people have screenshots, and my opinion is this thing looks ugly. This thing also looks pointless based upon what we've seen in the video, and I'm hoping that this is like an early you know, engineering sample, but it basically is an Android tablet with the DualSense split in half. And it has run some basic Android uh, operating system. It doesn't look like it has any real functionality yet. So I'm hoping that this is a mock-up. I'm hoping that, you know, it might just be a lie, but it, it looks like the basic controller. And quite frankly, it doesn't look like it's any better than using your phone and you know putting on the controller on the back so i would like to see from playstation that project q is something with more features rather than just you know streaming from the playstation throughout your home over wi-fi and you know it just doesn't look that great it really doesn't it looks very basic and i'm not seeing the appeal of it because in the xbox activision you know proceedings it came out that Xbox thought, well, they're going to come out with a handheld for just under $300. Now, if it was more like $100 for me, that'd make a little bit more sense because the DualSense, 70, 80 bucks, and then you're throwing an Android tablet on it. Um, those can get run pretty cheap. Um, and quite frankly, I don't see this expanding, but I do like the idea of it because I really wish that Sony went with a true portable gaming console even if it has to rely on their eventually cloud system. I, I haven't really used PlayStation Plus. I didn't really use the PlayStation Network. So I'm hoping that this is just the rumor mill 
because this thing to me just doesn't look good or worth the value. I'm not sure who it's going to be for. It looks to me like worse than the Wii U gamepad. And I actually like the Wii U gamepad. So here's hoping that this is just Reddit. <laughs> this is just whoever's posted on Twitter. But let's get to the final leak in that there is going to be a PlayStation Pro. And it's looking like it's going to come out for... November 2024, and this is quite an interesting one. Uh, it's supposedly going to handle 8K, and I don't know who has an 8K display. I don't know if you can really tell the difference. I know I personally cannot tell the difference. I do have some vision issues, especially the color blindness, which is why I really like adaptive controllers and things like that. It's hopefully going to play with more fidelity of what you know the PlayStation 5 can do. Uh, they expect better ray tracing, better, you know, game loading, um, more integration between devices, especially, you know, play PSVR. And it begs a lot of questions because when I made my last video about why no mid-generation refresh for the Xbox, why they don't care about the hardware and, you know, consoles, a lot of people came up with the argument like, we haven't really experienced, you know, this generation of consoles pushed to its limits. That, you know, they needed a refresh for the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 because it shipped with lower hardware specs than it was supposed to. And we don't really need it right now. Well, it's, it's that feeling. And I can't really talk about it until I like really see specs, but it is the general consensus that we're just finally moving out of the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 era. That cross-gen games are starting to move away and go the way of the dodo that we're not going to see it that much anymore and we haven't really experienced you know what these systems can do and quite frankly people are wondering why xbox isn't doing it too and they have two very different you know models of what they're trying to do i understand what sony is trying to do sony is still on this idea of exclusives and if we have exclusives and people buy our systems, you know, we're winning. Whereas Xbox is looking at, we want the all digital future. We want Game Pass. If we have control over what games are being produced, we're going to win. So we have two very different models. And of course, Nintendo is still doing what Nintendo does. They're not the best example of, you know, what, what a gaming company is doing because they just have a different vision of what's going on. Now... When Sony focuses on hardware and people bring up who has 8K TVs, who has 8K TVs, this might be a situation like the original Xbox. The original Xbox had a high-speed Ethernet port on it, which kind of forced a lot of people to upgrade their internet system and spend the money for high-speed internet at the time. This might get Sony to kind of be like, hey, we can start selling these 8K TVs. That might be their play there. That, okay, if we make a reasonable you know, PlayStation 5 Pro, and we say it can do all these things, and we get enough people to buy them, kind of like what they did with the PS2, and, you know, really boost DVD sales, just having the PS2 in the system, and, you know, Blu-ray with the PS3, it might boost the sales of their other technologies, especially the 8K TVs, which would be more expensive, and that might be their play there, using the PlayStation as a gateway drug to get other purchases that are from you know so sony's technological arms so they might be looking at that they might really be looking at that while they'll build up their you know subscription services on you know the ps5 and probably on the tv so i think that's the way they're going and that should be interesting that should really be interesting so i will believe things when i finally hear it from playstation um like i said this is a strange console generation and it's hard to predict what's going on because it doesn't make sense. It came out during a dead time for the world. Um, a lot of development wasn't able to be explored in the terms of games and that's why nothing's fully utilized yet. And I personally do not think they need a refresh yet, but unless developers are going to come out with some heavy games that really need a lot more resources i think the game the, the the play for sony is you know this is going to be what leads everyone into a different generation of entertainment 
And of course, I'm somehow hitting the tripod at the end of the video and it's starting to shake. But hey, if you got here, tell me what you think. Tell me in the comments what you think is going to happen with this generation of consoles. Do you think that Xbox is going to win out because they're going all digital future? Do you think that PlayStation is going to win out because they're coming out with new consoles? I didn't even talk about the PlayStation 5 Slim that might have, you know, an optical disc tray that I don't understand what's the difference between that and the digital. Who knows? They might just get rid of the one that comes with, you know, the disc reader and just go digital and sell it separately. Who knows? So tell me what you think in the comments. If you liked, hit the like button. If you dislike, hit the dislike button. Hit that subscribe button so I can reach a thousand by the end of the year. You made it to the end. You're an awesome person. We love you around here. Bye.